Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if I sound like hell, that's because I'm fighting off a man cold, but it's worth it to get this news out to you, because CryEngine 5.5 was just released. Now, CryEngine is one of those game engines that used to be just absolutely huge, fell in a little bit of hard times, and truth of the matter is, they're that scrappy little underdog we should pay attention to again. 5.5 is just going in the right direction, and this release contains a ton of updates. So, I figured what I'd do is go through the release notes, give you a quick look at CryEngine itself, and go from there. If you have written off CryEngine, I highly recommend recommend check it out again. All right, let's jump into this release. So we're going to head over. There's two sets of release notes. We're going to go through the uh, Coles notes version. I think that might not make sense out of Canada. It's the summary version, the TLDR type. Uh, there's a much longer uh, form release notes of what's in 5.5. I will link both of these down below. Uh, but what we've seen in this particular release, release highlights, SDOGI improvements um, will allow developers to create scenes with realistic ambient tonality, including major advancements with SVO ray trace shadowing. Now, you may be asking yourself, what the hell is SVO? And I asked the same thing. I don't know why it's not in the summary, but SVO stands for Sparse Voxel Octree. So it's a data structure for rendering. Um, Documentation got a major overhaul. This is an unsung hero, and this is one of those areas where CryEngine 3 used to really suck. So bad documentation makes for a bad game engine experience. Better documentation, well, makes for a better game engine experience. So it's definitely nice to see that in there as well. Speaking of the entry-level experience, there is also now a Flappy Birds clone that's kind of... Uh, an introduction to using CryEngine, and these are always nice. Minimalistic projects is what I always try to create when I first start using an engine. Now, I hate Flappy Birds with the passion of a thousand bursting suns, but it is an effective demonstration. So there is a starting place there, and on the topic of Flappy Birds, there's actually really good courseware to go with it, and we'll get back to that in a second. But it is a starting point for you. Oddly enough, though, they chose to use their FlowGraph visual programming language, which is sort of being pushed to the background. It's a little strange they didn't go with C Sharp, which is kind of the future of CryEngine development. Uh, updates to the UI, uh, Sandbox Editor, which is basically the editor, um, improved workflow performance optimization. There's more details of exactly what that means in the full-on release notes, but basically usability improvements. Uh, train object blending, you can basically now mark endies with a mesh component to make it blend better with the train mesh, so you can see like what's going on here with the, the snow coming into this environment. Updated entity components. Now, they've been pushing with the release of 5.x towards an entity component system, whereas you attach entities to the world and you give logic to them via the composition of components. Uh, this has definitely improved here. Um, so multiple new and legacy components have come to the entity system. So things they've been porting from the old way, including porting of legacy rain and water ripple effects, uh, a new VR camera interaction component to get user up and running with VR projects quickly. Uh, C-sharp upgrade. So C-sharp is the future of scripting in the crying engine um, game engine. Uh, C-sharp uh, assets can be directly inside, uh, created directly inside the asset browser and functions may be exposed to uh, schematic, which is their upcoming visual composition and programming language. Uh, inside of Entity Component, C Sharp users will now be able to debug through Visual Studio via a new extension. So now you can create your scripts directly inside of the sandbox, but you will also be able to debug through video, Visual Studio with a new extension, which is cool to hear about. Uh, train systems has been improved, blend multiple materials, and use a new displacement option in the sculpting tools for even more realistic uh, terrain. Uh, game platform plugins. This is kind of cool. Uh, plugins allow for easy common distribution platforms and data protocols uh, specifically to Steamworks and PlayStation Networks of so things like leaderboards, high uh, score, that kind of stuff. It's now available through this plugin system. Uh, CryEngine version and full editor source code. So you can submit pull requests, access the full sandbox editor source code, and get preview releases via GitHub. So the source is out there. That does not make this an open source project, but you can access and edit the source. It's much like Unreal Engine in that regard. Uh, do keep in mind with CryEngine 5.4, they changed their licensing model again. It is a straight revenue share system. So uh, you owe, not uh, revenue share, got commission. So you owe a 5.5. I think percent commission on revenue after a certain threshold is met. But do be aware the uh, licensing model has changed on CryEngine, so I would check that out before committing to using it. But it's a fair one they went with. Uh, there's a Unity migration guide, so if you're coming over from Unity, uh, there is a quick up guide, basically, you know, the Rosetta Stones for Unity developers to get going with CryEngine itself. Um, new sandbox level format brings the feature ability to place level files anywhere within the project, which is nice. Their, their structure for requiring levels before seemed a little clunky. Uh, allows for dynamic population. 
Automatic packaging and backing up, non-coders can simply share and release CryEngine content with new package build functionality, so it make it easier to share and back up your projects, which is also cool to see. Uh, coincidentally, 32-bit is going away. 32-bit is going away everywhere, it seems. Uh, but there's a couple reasons to give behind it. Number one seemed to be that the Vulkan renderer does not support 32-bit operating systems, and that is the future of their Android renderer. Uh, 32-bit Linux is not supported, and so on. So basically, they're just saying no more 32-bit OSs. But we're kind of kind of probably getting to a point where 32-bit is a very small, maybe 5% of the market, and among developers, probably even smaller than that. So this does seem reasonable, and a lot of game engines are moving 32-bit only, much to the chagrin of Windows 7 32-bit standouts. Uh, now, I did mention earlier there is a much more comprehensive set of release notes. They are available right here, cover the same basic material we just went through with a little bit more detail. And then we get into a thousand other changes and fixes they made. Now, I do not have the throat capacity with this cold right now to go through a thousand other changes. I really don't think you want to go through them anyways, but they are all linked right here. So if you're interested, there are a ton of fixes, tweaks, and improvements in this release, and they just kind of keep going and going and going. This is not a minor point release. This is a pretty significant release that they've got working on here. Um, one other thing that I mentioned earlier on is the Flappy Birds thing. Flappy Birds are not actually included as part of the CryEngine install. In fact, the CryEngine install is basically the launcher. And then you can go on the marketplace, grab their SDK demo and the Flappy Birds demo, import them in and create a new game as a result. So do be aware you have to go through the marketplace to grab these things. And then if you do grab the Flappy Bird stuff, you can head over to the launcher, say reveal in Finder. And in the root directory, there is Flappy Birds Syllabus 5.5 PDF. And this is basically your getting started guide. It is a 102 pages PDF step by step of how to basically create Flappy Birds using CryEngine 5.5. So if you're looking to get up and running with 5.5, uh, even though it uses their somewhat outdated uh, scripting programming, uh, it's definitely the place to start. So this walks you comprehensively through creating your Flappy Birds game. So if you want your introduction to CryEngine 5, 5 uh, download that Flappy Birds example, grab the PDF in the root directory, and give it a read. All right, so this is CryEngine 5.5. If you have not looked in a while, you will notice the, uh, the uh, user interface is streamlined a whole lot. Uh, it used to be really menu heavy, and the menus were clunky. There was a lot of... Um, outdated things in here. Now it is much cleaner. I kind of hope Lumberyard does the same thing, cleans things up. It is just as bloated as CryEngine used to be. It is a nice streamlined event. You've got down here, you've got your assets. Over here, you have your um, your basically entities in the scene. So if I grab something, you will see it shows up over here. And then over here, you have your uh, composition. So you see an entity can have multiple different components, like, such as a mesh, rigid body, or we can add a new component to it. And here are the various different components in the engine. And there are a ton of them. Physics constraints, uh, physics and actors, lighting, geometric objects, special effects, debug, cameras, and audio. And really, that composition method, the, the, the using components to entities is getting more and more common. Uh, creating an entity is quite simple. Basically just create one, double click, come on. Oh, I created it, I just don't know where it went. What did it call it? Okay, the experience here is a little screwy, but basically come in here, create an empty entity. Since there's nothing attached to it, you're not seeing, but you're switched up here to create object. Drop one in the world, then you will see right here there is an entity 11, and then we can just go ahead and start adding components to it. So for example, we could go into uh, geometry, uh, mesh, and there you see it is now in the world. So a composition and creation of things is quite easy. The user interface is pretty simple, straightforward to work with. I'm using WASD keys to navigate around, you know, click to select that you obviously you can access the components for the various things attached to them on top of that most of your tools are available here in tools the two different uh, programming options visually are semantic right there and flow graph which is the um, slightly older version of things um, and of course you can go into the c-sharp as well um, c-sharp code is predictably enough there inside of here we can now open that guy up and it will fire off in visual studio 
Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to need to install a new plugin since 5.5, so I'm just going to ignore that for now. But basically, there is a project in with your project file. Additionally, you can click a CryEngine project and say right-click it, and it will have extended Explorer. Let's see if I've got the launcher so I can show you this in action. All right, so if I go to this guy right here, and we'll reveal it in the Finder. You see the CryEngine project here. You can actually build it or create the solution, create a generated solution, etc. Basically, by right-clicking on the CryEngine project. I also believe you can set CryEngine up to use Visual Studio Code if your preference is there. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get out of that. I haven't done the updating yet, so we'll just close that. But basically, it's straight up C# -sharp code that is involved. Head on back over to the CryEngine editor, and the one last thing I will show you is help. Oh, sorry, no, here. You can run and preview your game directly inside of the CryEngine Editor, like this. Hit escape to exit out. And then finally, we go into the help. You go to the documentation. You see it's obviously all on the web right now. Uh, and this is greatly updated. So we now have CryEngine reference and we have sandbox documentation. So the improved reference is definitely definitely something nice to see coming in. So this is CryEngine 5.5. Uh, if you have not checked out CryEngine in a while, I, I honestly tell you, you should do, definitely give it another look, even just to see what it looked like compared to the, the earlier versions. CryEngine 3, I completely wrote off as a poorly documented, basically, uh, this is like they took their game crisis, spun off a little bit of the engine and said, here, have fun with it, as opposed to, you know, documenting it and creating it as a proper from the ground up indie friendly game engine. 5.5 seems to have learned that lesson. They're going the opposite direction, making better documentation available, making the experience better, making it easier, making it tightly integrated using the C-sharp programming language. It's definitely all a move in the right direction, and it's turning into an engine that is, in fact, viable for indie devs. So that is CryEngine 5.5. Hopefully you found that useful. Again, all the links that everything I talked about will be down below. Let me know what you think. Have you checked out 5.5? Have you checked out CryEngine in the last year or so? Um, it's definitely changed a whole lot and it's worth checking out. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.